So a motor unit is essentially a motor neuron and all of the muscle fibers that it innovates. So if I go back to the previous image, you can see here you've got your motor neuron and you see that it's, it's zoomed in on a whole muscle body, but it's got lots of different branches and it looks like it's going to innovate lots of chunks of muscle fibers. So this motor neurons quite with its muscle fibers makes up a big motor unit because it's activating lots of muscle fibers whereas some will just innovate one or two muscle fibers and that will be a smaller motor unit. Now, the motor neurons themselves separate off into branches and these lead into these muscle fibers and then as the information is transmitted from the CNS to the muscle using this motor neuron, it breaks off and it joins onto the motor, onto the muscle itself. Once this as a motor unit, this whole motor neuron plus the innovated muscle fibers work together, then the electrical transmission stimulates that muscle fiber to contract. So then within that muscle fiber, all of the myofibrils, the sarcomeres, and then as we break down further, the actin and myosin activate to cause the contraction. So we're getting contraction from a motor unit, which all comes from our motor neuron and the fibers that it innovates. Now, it's important to know that with electricity, you can either turn it on or turn it off. You can't have half measures. So it's exactly the same for your nerves in your body. And a motor unit can either be on or it can be off. And there is nothing in between that, which means that you can either activate all of those muscle fibers that that motor neuron is um, attaching itself to or none of them. And we call that the all or none law. And that's when either the muscle fibers contract fully or not at all. So some motor units, as I said earlier, go to uh, include a lot of muscle fibers. And that might be for something like, say, in your quads. So think about your quads. They have to generate a lot of force, so a lot of force. And as a result, they're going to have, say, one motor neuron to lots of muscle fibers so that every time you ask for that to contract, it contracts with a big force and it's less complex. Whereas compared to something in your hand whereby you need less force but you need more agility, in your hand you're going to have maybe less fibers attached to each motor neuron. So the motor units are smaller. And if the motor units are smaller, it gives you more options of what you can do, meaning that you have more dexterity in your hands compared to your quadriceps, for example. So alongside those, you're able to kind of see the differences of whether it's recruited or not. And then if you want a greater contraction, you just recruit more motor units. And if you want less of a contraction, you re recruit less motor units. And they fire at different times depending, allowing for sustained contraction. So if you've got a sustained contraction, you can have multiple motor units firing at different points in order to hold that contraction. And it's really complex, but it's absolutely fantastic for allowing us what we're doing and amazing how it's evolved. So looking at it from a sort of broad point of view, if you were to sit on a leg press now and you choose the weight that you want to lift and you choose, let's say, go for a nice lightweight and you go for 20 kilos and you know it's 20 kilos, you recruit less motor units in order to do it. So your body takes that visual message from your eyes, so your sensory receptor here is from your eyes, sends it to the CNS and says, oh, we only need a certain amount of motor units to lift this, sends the signal down via the motor, motor neurons into the muscle fibers to recruit just a set amount of motor units. Whereas as soon as you take that weight down onto a heavier resistance, you now have a message sent to your brain uh, sorry, your eyes send your message to your um, central nervous system. Your central nervous system sends it onwards to your motor units to say, we need more motor units, and you recruit the right amount. And that really shows the, the, the importance of knowing what weight you have your weights on. Now, I don't know if you've ever gone to pick up a box you thought was much heavier than it was, <laughs> and it ends up being really light. So when you pick it up, it kind of moves really quickly. 
and that's because your motor units you've recruited don't quite match the force that you've just exerted. So it's about that balance between the two. And here's a nice drawing of your motor units as well. So you can see the spinal cord there in the middle at the top and how these are breaking down into um, several motor neurons. And as these go off, that's one motor unit and that's branched off into a couple of, um, in fact, into three muscle fibers. Whereas motor unit one here is branched off into two muscle fibers. And it's a really clear way of getting to know how that's integrating in the muscle.